doesn't record anybody else or anything else but what I write here. And it's exactly what you see. Um, I would like to go back and review a couple of things uh, from algebra. Uh, you, I have a lot of students um, who say to me, I had in the past, and I hope that it's not going to be your case, who say to me, calculus, easy. Algebra, super difficult. Well, calculus is based on algebra. So getting to calculus and not being able to do anything by hand uh, not understanding what's happening and just punching stuff in the calculator and just writing an answer, whatever it is, I don't think that this is what we want to do. So I'd like to go back and review a couple of things. Um, and uh, these, everything I'm going to review is going to be used throughout the course this semester and next semester. Um, so what I would like to start with is um, what it's called difference quotient. For now, let's just write it down as is, and I will explain what it is. But I'd like for now to choose a couple of functions and determine the difference quotient for those functions. And then I will tell you what the difference quotient means and how it is used in calculus. Okay? So the difference quotient. Because I stand, sometimes my handwriting is not very eligible, so please raise your hand and say, hey, something is not right, or I don't understand what you wrote. Okay, the difference quotient is a quotient. And um, it's nothing else but maybe I should just explain what it is before I put down the formula. I think it's even, even better for you. Okay, so I have a function, and I have a point that I'm going to call P, and I have another point that I'm going to call Q. Can anyone give us the coordinate, the y-coordinate of P, if I say that the first coordinate, the x-coordinate is x? Of course. And if I say that uh, this is on a Cartesian system where this is x and this is x plus a little bit, I'm going to call this a little bit. And you can say it doesn't show, it doesn't seem like it'd be a little bit. Bear with me. So the x coordinate of p is x. The x coordinate of q is what the x coordinate is very good. And now, can anyone give us the the y coordinate of q? Uh, x plus x. Excellent. So we have two points: <coughs> point P and point Q, and I want to draw a line through those two points. Since the line goes to two points on the function, I'm going to call this line a secant line. It has nothing to do with trigonometry. So the function called secant, right? It's called secant line. Is there another type of line if it's not secant? If I have this function, what, type of, what other type of line could I have? If I don't have a secant line that crosses the function through or intersects in two points, I could have a tangent line. So this will be a tangent line. Good. So now I would like to determine the slope of this line. And this is the difference quotient. So now we know what it is, but what is it used for? We don't know yet. I will explain after we pick some functions. So I know that the difference quotient is the slope of a line that goes through two points on a function. Why? We'll see. So can anyone give us the difference quotient? A line 
the slope of a line passing through two points. Okay. Well, Please. Excellent. Excellent. Yes. X plus H minus X. Let's write it first so for everyone to see, but you're right. The X will go away and H is... So Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Of course, the X's go away because one is positive and one is negative. So obviously the difference quotient is F of X plus H minus F of X divided by H. Indeed. Excellent. Perfect step. Thank you. I will explain later, hopefully today, where is this used and why we need it. Okay, so I would like to choose a couple of functions. So first I'm I would like to look at a quadratic function. And do what with it? Find its difference quotient. Then I would like to look at a radical function and what, do, what to do with it. Find its difference quotient and so on and so forth. And then at the end we will explain what the difference quotient means in calculus and why is it used and how. Okay, so can anyone dictate a quadratic function? Just an example. Any quadratic function you can come up with. Okay, um, 2x squared um, minus 3x. Excellent. This is a quadratic function indeed. And we want to find its difference quotient. Where will I start? What do I have to do first to find a difference quotient? So let me write it one more time. Difference quotient is f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. And by the way, we have to remember this from now on. So what do I have and what I don't have from this difference quotient? Or I'd Say, you do have this, you do have that, but you don't have this. Exactly. I have f of x. I do have h in the sense that I, don't, I can't do anything to it. But what I don't have is, and I did not calculate yet, is... Exactly. So how do I determine f of x plus h? Yes. Yes, I'm ready. Oh. Um, what? What? Yep. Oh, uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, two, uh, two times, do you want me to go ahead and break it out? Or? No, just tell me to write it first for everyone to see, and then we'll simplify it. Okay, um, x plus h squared. Very good. Minus three times. Very good. Do we all understand this step? Not really. Okay, very good. So when I have, when I look at a function like this one, we just came up with it, f of whatever equals 2 times whatever squared minus 3 times whatever plus 3. When I look at this function, this is what I see. Now, if I'm asked to evaluate this function for whatever, all I have to do is put the whatever in, in this little box, correct? And what is my whatever now? X plus my whatever is x plus h. Is this somewhat better? So then f of whatever equals 2 times whatever squared minus 3 times whatever and plus 3. So far, so good. Now, I have to simplify this before I bring it in here. Before I put in the difference quotient, I have to fully simplify it. Can anyone dictate? I'm here. What do I have? What operation do I have to perform first? When I square a binomial, what do I get? A trinomial. So what? Do I have to write? X squared plus 2xh. Very X good. Squared. Excellent. Do we understand the step? When we square a binomial, 
Okay, very good. Now I can distribute negative 3x, negative 3h plus 3. And now I distribute. Very good. 2x squared plus 4xh plus 2h squared minus 3x minus 3h and plus 3. I have the third piece that goes in the difference quotient, which is this. Which is this. And now I'm ready to put it together and simplify the difference quotient. <coughs> so the difference quotient for this function is, I replace f of x plus h by all this, 2x squared plus 4xh plus 2h squared minus 3x minus 3h plus 3. So I'm done with this portion. Now, I have minus in front, in front of this function. What should I write? Excellent. What do you think I am going to do next? Say it again. Very good. Excellent. So, I'm hoping that the terms with no h will go away. That's my hope. Always. So, I see a negative 2x squared with a positive 2x squared. I see a positive 3x with a negative 3x, and I see a negative 3 with a positive 3. Those six terms are gone. The remaining terms, how many? Very good. What are they have in common? What do they have in common? H. Good. So we have to pull it out. And what is left in parentheses? 4x. Perfect. Plus 2h. Perfect. Um, minus 3. Excellent. What do you think I'm going to do next? Um, and the simplified form is? 4x plus 2h minus 3. Now, coming back to our little function here, the little graph that we had. What do you think that this represents, if you remember, from pre-calculus or college algebra? What does this represent, the slope of this line going through these two points? What does it represent? The average rate of change between P and Q of the function f of x. Exactly, that's what it is. The average rate of change. So if this, if this is the distance function, I will know the average velocity between the two. Rate of change of distance with respect to time. So if I'm here in Baltimore and I'm here in New York, and I know the, if, uh, the distance function, and you tell me the time, of course, then I will know the rate of change, the average velocity between these two points. The average rate of change. Good. I would like to choose now a rational function and do the same thing. Can anyone give us a rational function for which we will determine the difference quotient, which will be the rate of change? So this is what it is. It's the rate of change of this quadratic function between those two points, P and Q. Can you do? Very good. 2x plus 6. 2x plus 6 over? Um, 4x squared um, minus. Let's leave it in a linear in the denominator because otherwise it will take us way longer. So let's say 4x minus 5. Perfect. So we want to find and simplify the difference quotient. Now we know what this is. Can anyone dictate the difference quotient? Yeah. Excellent. 
I do have sort of two pieces. I have this piece and I have this piece, but I don't have the other. But it's much less work for this function. So let's determine f of x plus h. Can anyone dictate? Remember, when we look at this function now, we will see 2 times whatever plus 6 over 4 times whatever minus 5. 2x plus h. Very good. I'm going to distribute right away. 2x plus 6, 4x plus 4h minus 5. Excellent. So now I kind of have all three pieces. And I'm ready to... Um, put them together and find the difference quotient. So the difference quotient is Can anyone dictate? Two x plus two h plus six over 4x plus 4h minus 5 minus 2x plus 6 over 4x minus 5. Very good. Good. Ready? What do I have to find now? Very good. What is the least common denominator in the numerator? I see a denominator that is 4x plus 4h minus 5, and I see a denominator that is 4x minus 5. So what would be the least common denominator? Say it again. Careful. 4x plus 4h minus 5. Careful. OK. Exactly. They have nothing in common. So it's 4x plus 4h minus 5 and 4x minus 5. Absolutely mandatory. They have nothing in common. When I say common, I mean factors. They have no factors in common, so we have no choice. That's the least common denominator. It's like when you subtract like 1 half minus 1 third. Is it 2 or is it 3, the least common denominator? The least common denominator is not 2 and not 3, but is the product of the 2, because 2 and 3 have nothing in common. The same thing with these two. OK, so now what do I multiply the top of the first fraction? What do I multiply this? 4x minus 5, because this was multiplied by it. The top has to take the same thing. What do I multiply the top of the second fraction by? Of course. See, if I had chosen this, just this, as the least common denominator, here I would have put 1, but what would you put here? This times what is this? It doesn't exist. It's like saying, if I put here 3, then I'm asking you 2 times what is 3? And you'll say, what? Same thing here, right? Perfect. So then... Let's distribute. I'm going to distribute 4x to these three terms. Then I'm going to distribute negative 5 to these three terms. Then I'm going to distribute 2x to these three terms, but change the signs. And then I'm going to distribute 6 to these three terms and change the signs. So I'm ready when you are. Plus eight x squared minus twenty four x. Uh, x. Plus. Good. Minus. Yes. Ten. Ten x. Yes. Minus ten h. Minus thirty. Excellent. So we're finished only with the top of the first fraction. Now I have to be very careful. Everything I multiply, I have to change the sign because of the minus outside. So 2x times 4x, but with minus outside. 2x times 4x, but with minus outside. 
2x times negative 5, which is negative 10x, but with minus outside. 6 times 4 is 24, but with minus. 6 times 4 is 24, but with minus. And then a negative 30, but with minus positive 30. What do I have to do next? <clears throat> yes. What do you hope? That the terms at the top with no H go away. Some others maybe, but at least those ones without H must go away. Good. So here is one. Here is the other. What is left at the top? So there is a negative 10H and there is a negative 24H. So the numerator is negative 34H divided by 4X plus 4H minus 5 times 4x minus 5, and now I multiply by the multiplicative inverse of the denominator. So negative 10 with negative 24 was negative 34h, and I have h over 1, which becomes times 1 over h. Do we agree with all this so far? What do you think I'm going to do next? And the simplified form, negative 34 divided by 4x plus 4h minus 5, and multiplied by 4x minus 5. And this is final. What will this represent? Yes, please. So sorry. Thank you. What will this represent? the average rate of change of this function between those two points. Well, actually, any two points. OK, so we looked at a quadratic. We looked at a rational. Now I would like a radical, a square root function. <coughs> square root. I'm going to put 2x minus 5. Very good. So we want to find a difference quotient, which is, which will give us the rate of change of the function, the average rate of change of the function between two points. Any two points on the graph of this function. So what is the definition again of the difference quotient? You should never forget it because once we write, write it like three or four times. F of x plus h. F of x plus h minus. That's it. Good. So I have this. I have this. I have to create f of x plus h. Can anyone create f of x plus h for us? Plus two h. And minus 5. Will you all agree? Because x becomes x plus h, and I distribute 2, and I get 2x plus 2h minus 5. Correct? OK. So so the difference quotient. I'm ready when you are. So the square root of 2x plus 2h minus 5 minus the square root of 2x minus 5 over h. Excellent. Now how we address this issue. How do I simplify this? <laughs> there is a procedure called 
Anyone remembers? Very good. Rationalizing the numerator. Excellent. We need to rationalize the numerator. Multiplying top and bottom, numerator and denominator, by the conjugate. The conjugate of the numerator. Perfect. What is the conjugate of the numerator? So I get I have to multiply it by. I'm going to continue from here here. To multiply by. Excellent. The denominator is easy. I have to multiply h by this. So I'm going to write it. But now I have to multiply the two numerators. I have to multiply this <coughs> by this. What do I get? This is like multiplying a minus b by a plus b. Can anyone remind us the formula? Very good. Excellent. That is indeed the formula we have to use now. Perfect. So please square this and tell me what to write. Two x plus two x minus five. Excellent. Two x plus two h minus five. Remember minus. Minus two x plus five. Very good. Very good. And yes, when I distribute the negative 2x with a positive 2x, the negative 5 with a positive 5, and what is left at the top, hopefully all terms with no h are gone, and they are. So the numerator now is 2h. And what am I going to do next? Of course, that was the whole purpose, to get that h out of the way. The h from the h from the denominator had to go away. That was the problem. Like in all the different quotients, that was the problem. That's what I was hoping for, h in the denominator to go away, this to go away, and it did. And it did again, and yet again. The fact that there is a still an age in there, it's fine. But this is the problem. This is the problem in all of them. Any questions? Now, before I move on, I'm going to ask you, would you like to practice any of, the, any of these on your own? Would you like to choose a particular function? OK. Okay, so let's choose three functions. So that's my page five. So f of x, f of x, and f of x. So please create a quadratic function, but let's, let's write it down so everyone works on the same function. I'm ready. I will create the quadratics. Let's say negative 3x squared plus 2x plus 1. Who wants to create the rational function? Yes. 
over yeah, 4x plus 2. Perfect. Who wants to create the square root function? Very good. Is Crystal here? Yes. Perfect. Christopher. Oh. Eric. Yeah. Thank you. Two Eric's. Okay, Daryl. Thank you. Sarah. Yeah. And Eric. Okay. James. Perfect. Sharmila. Is am I pronouncing your name? Okay. Arthur. Arthur. Alex. Jasmine, Zach, and Sarah. Did I call everyone? Thank you. Yes. Yes. You need paper? I can give you paper. Um, Oh, you wanted to take a look at the ratio? Yes? You, you want me to bring it back? Oh, yeah. yeah uh, this or that? That, that, that? Okay. Let me know if you need help. Have an answer for uh, the quadratic function? Yes, you do. Right here. 
squared plus 2xh plus h squared. I'm not saying it's right. <laughs> yes, yes, but it's still minus and minus. Yeah, we cannot change the signs. Jasmine, how are you doing? Um, I, I think we should uh, work on this together, on the first one together, okay? If you had no difficulties with the first one, move on to the other two. But if you're stuck on the first one, let's work on this together. So first of all, the difference quotient, we cannot forget this ever, is f of x plus h 
minus f of x divided by h, okay? Now, this piece is not a problem. I have it right there. This piece is just h. I can't do anything to it. But I have to find this before I start, before I put all these three pieces together. I have to find that. So in order to find f of x plus h, what do I have to do? I plug in x plus h. Where I see x, I plug in x plus h, correct? Mm -hmm. So I have negative 3 in parentheses x plus h squared plus 2 x plus h and plus 1, correct so far? Mm -hmm. But by the order of operations, what do I have to do? Now, next, and I cannot I cannot write that this is x squared plus h squared. I cannot do that. Because <coughs> I know it's not. But what does this represent? Right? So I have negative 3 quantity x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. And now plus 2x plus 2h plus 1. And it's still not fully simplified. I still don't want to put it in here yet. So what do I have to write next? There are none. I wish I could simplify something, but I can't. This is it. This is this piece. So now take it from here. Put those three pieces together and simplify the difference quotient. This is this piece. Then you have to subtract what I have in parentheses, which is the function itself, and divide by h. Can we put these three pieces together? Yes? Okay, so put them together and tell me what you get. So the difference quotient for this function. Oh. Nope, anyone. All right, so you get um, negative 3x squared minus 6xh minus 3h squared plus 2x plus 2h plus 1. So we only replace this piece. Now I, I reach the minus in the difference quotient. And I have to change all signs for the function. So plus 3x squared minus 2x and minus 1. Do we all agree with this? Are we caught up with the first function now, everyone? And what now? <coughs> I'm hoping what? Yes, that the terms without h go away so I can factor out h from the remaining terms so I can cancel. This is the culprit. This is the problem. And you will see why later, sooner rather than later. You will see that that is the problem. This is the one I have to get rid of. So once those terms go away, the terms without h, now the remaining one, two, three terms have h in common. And that h that I pull out will help me eliminate the h in the denominator. And you will see why I need that to go away shortly. So then what is left in parentheses? Minus 6x minus 3h plus 2. So finally h goes away. And that was the plan. And the simplified form will give us the average rate of change of this function between any two points, p and q. One with coordinates x comma y, and the other one with coordinates x plus a little bit comma y, whatever y. So this is negative 6x, negative 3h, plus 2.
Any questions? Any questions? Now, can we work on the ra on the rational function next? That is more difficult. It requires more work. Do we need more time on the second one, or you already have it? Yes. The yes. On the on the next one, you mean, yes. or the quadratic function? On the second one. Yes. <coughs> Can I take a look? Sure. And Please. let them work on the second one. Yeah. 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 Y
12x squared. I agree. Just I agree. I agree. Plus. I agree. I agree. Four. Excellent. Now the remaining terms will all be negative, right? I, okay, good. So minus. Minus. Minus 12x squared. Minus 12xx. Minus 6x. Minus 8x. Minus 8h. Minus 4. Do you all agree with this? Why all the remaining terms were, were negative? Because this all these terms here are positive, all these terms here are positive, and there is one negative that will be transferred to all of them, all the products. What do I hope now? That all terms with no H will go away. Okay, so let's see. And, and more, if possible. But at least those. 12x squared with negative 12x squared. 12xh with negative 12sh. Negative 8x with positive 8x. Negative 8x with positive 8x. Negative 4 with positive 4. So what is left? 6x minus 8h, which makes it negative 2h. So this is negative 2h over 4x plus 4h plus 2. And 4x plus 2 multiplied by? 1 over h. That was the whole purpose to get rid of this. And we are getting it of it. We're getting it. I'm sorry? It's not shown on the screen. It's also one. Sorry about that. <coughs> so please correct if you made an error. It's negative 2 over. And you could factor out a 2 from here and a 2 from here. So I would write this if that's what you want 2x plus 2h plus 1, and 2x plus 1. I think you factor on the 2. Yeah, 2 from here and 2 from here. 2 times 2 is 4. So this becomes 2, 2, 1, and this becomes 2, 1. So then I'll simplify. So this is negative 1 over 2, 2x plus 2h plus 1, and 2x plus 1. And this is final. Don't forget the minus in front, though. It's very important. Because if the answer here somehow becomes negative 1 half, it's going to be a negative slope, a negative rate of change. If the answer is positive 1 half, let's say, or positive 2 or positive 10, then it's a positive rate uh, change, a rate of change. It's an increasing change. OK. Positive. Okay, uh, last one. Uh, what was it? I forgot. The square root of um, four x plus three. Okay. Do we need more time on this one? Okay. Two minutes. Let's take two minutes. And then I would like to explain what this is and how it is really used. I highly recommend um, create new functions, make up new functions, and work on this again at home. It's a very good question. You can show them to me. But now the, th the second, the third, the fourth, you'll have no difficulties with that you shouldn't. But I will show you later how to check them. Yes? Is this is a uh, course that someone who doesn't have a lot or any time at home would be able to do well? So you, let's suppose you are teaching me rock climbing. 
and I say to you, do you think I can ever get to the top? Because I don't have time to come here. I don't have time to do any rock climbing. Do you think I can get to the top? What would you say to me? Let's, let's try. What would you say to me? So, silver trek means four hours a day. Silver trek means four hours a day instead of ten. I would just go with that. Four hours a day. Now, now if you if you took this course before and you got an A in it and you just want to you know for fun take the course again and you have no problem with that then why not? You just want to. I don't know. I don't know what to say. I have a few hours I was hoping that you know, you'd only make an hour. Well, I could say this to you go home, put the calculus book under your pillow, and go to bed. So maybe tomorrow morning, when you wake up, I'm going to say, I can teach this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but if I were to take a class and I would say that to my professor, I think I, I would probably stun them. <laughs> I, I don't have it. I'm here. <laughs> it doesn't that is not that enough? I want to climb the Everest, but I'm here. I I don't want to go there, but I want to climb the Everest tomorrow. I won't be able to because I have no practice. Uh, we'll see what happens. So again, I don't know. Um, you know, some people have a perfect memory. And you know, photographic memory, and they can <coughs> reproduce everything at once. So you may be one of them. <laughs> so the difference quotient. So the square root. And I will multiply and divide by. Do not forget to multiply and divide. Because remember, this has to be 1. You're multiplying the given function by 1, the given difference quotient by 1. So you can't change anything. So that's why you have the top and bottom the same thing. Now the denominator is fine. It's this. Uh, say it again. Eric, say it again, please. Uh, you mean here? They have to be identical. So if this is minus, this has to be plus, but these two have to be identical because I'm multiplying by 1. This has to equal 1. And if they weren't identical, I would have changed it. Uh, the difference quotient. Okay, so then what do I get at the top? Excellent. Of course, I hope again that those terms with no h will go away so that the h in the denominator eventually goes away as well. And it will. So this and this will go away. I don't like to write it like this, it's not correct. I have to write it again and then simplify. I can't be lazy. Now I'm allowed to simplify. So the final form, the simplified form, is 4 over the whole thing. So I'm kind of being lazy. Um, <laughs> so say we get further than the the class and um and well I really my hope so on my work of let's say taking that that problem right um is it okay to to just write like uh like C for positive so for positive as long as we have uh, identified like early on in the Yes, that will be fine. There is always one or two 
normally one student in each class who wants to negotiate. <laughs> so I now know who the negotiator is, Chris. Good. Excellent. So um, we have to, any situations, you are going to be the lawyer from now on. So I don't talk to anybody in the class. If anybody has a claim, they have to come to you first. And then you'll present it to me. Just kidding. Okay, good. So now let's go back to our function. Which function? The function that we looked at uh, some time ago. That little graph. And I got my pen mixed up. Okay. So back to our function where we had p, we had q, we had f of x, and this was x comma f of x, and this was x plus a little bit, f of x plus a little bit. So this is then x, this is the x plus h, and of course this must be what? h. Good. And we created that, uh, we drew this uh, line and this was the secant line and we determined its slope and now we know that the slope of this line is f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h so this is what we looked at and we looked at three different functions okay now here is what I want, we want to determine. Can I, if I give you two points on a graph of a function, will you always be able to determine the slope of that line? So I have a function, I have two points, I draw a line through those two points, will I always be able to determine the slope of this line? Because I have two points. Okay, here's what I would like to determine now. Here's again my point P from the same function, and this is x comma f of x. And we've already talked about the fact that this is the average, if this is the distance function, this will, me, this will give me, between these two points, the average velocity that I drew from, uh, drove at um, from Baltimore to New York, let's say. Okay, the slope of this line will give me the average velocity between these two points. Okay, but now let's say you call me, I'm in New Jersey, and you say, tell me what is your speed right now. What is the speed that you, the instantaneous velocity, not the average. So this, the slope, is the average velocity between P and Q. And now I'm driving again to New York, from here to New York, and I'm somewhere in New Jersey, and you call me on my cell phone and you say, I want to, to, you to tell me now, not I don't care about the average velocity that you use because you spend uh, an hour at the toll, tolls and you drove it roughly at 60 miles an per hour and then you also drove at, drove at 90 miles an hour for a little piece of the road no 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 i want you to tell me what is the instantaneous velocity the, that you're driving at the moment i call you well that will be the rate of change not the average the rate, the rate of change at this point, which is given by the slope of the tangent line at that point. So the slope of the tangent at P gives the instantaneous velocity at P. It gives the instantaneous velocity at P. No average between two points. It's just the speed that I'm driving at the moment you call me, at that instant. Oh, okay, but how do I do this? Because I don't have two points. Here I had two points, P and Q, and I knew the slope formula, 
f of x plus h minus f of x over x plus h plus minus x. And I got the slope. And I was able to determine the average velocity. But here I have only one point. There is no way I can determine the slope of a line if I only have one point. I don't have a formula. There's no formula for finding the slope of a line with given only one point. Okay, so here's how, what. How are we going to determine this? Initially, we're going to estimate it. Later on in this course, we're going to determine it exactly. Okay, so I want to determine the slope of the tangent line at P. I don't want to determine the slope of the secant line PQ. I'm done with that. I want to determine the slope of the tangent line at P. So here's what I do. <coughs> Assuming, so remember, h is tiny. It's not 1,500. It's not even 1. It's like 0.2 or well, maybe 0.1, small. So follow my scenario. Let's say now I move point q closer to p. So I make this h even smaller. So now this is my new q. And this is my secant line. Can I determine the slope of the red line? I have two points. I can determine the slope of the red line, correct? Good. Now, let's say I want to move Q even closer to P. So let's, I'm going to call this Q1, and I'm going to call this Q2. Can I determine the slope of PQ2? Yes. I can, right? Because I have two points. Now, which of these three slopes? This, I know it's silly, but I just want to make sure we understand this. This slope, this slope, this slope, or this slope will be closer to the slope of the tangent line at P. P and Q2. Of course, the slope of PQ2 will be closer to the slope of the line, of the tangent line at P. You agree? I repeat the process as many times as I want. Do you see how I will get an estimate, a quite a good estimate, of the slope of the tangent line at P? So, here's what I would like to write. The slope of the secant line PQ eventually does not equal. I'm saying gets closer. This arrow translates into gets closer to, to what? To the slope of the tangent line at P when, what does H do? Exactly. So, as Q gets closer and closer to P, obviously H gets closer and closer, closer and closer to what? Zero. To zero. And then this line eventually becomes this line. So, the slope of the secant line PQ eventually becomes or gets closer to the slope of the tangent at P only when I make Q get closer and closer to P, which eventually translates into H getting closer and closer to zero. Do we see that? Okay, I'm ready to look at a more problem in the book. On page 86, I would like to look at, uh, let's start with problem five. <coughs> five on page 86. If a ball is thrown into the air with a velocity of 40 feet per second, maybe I should put this up here. If a ball is thrown into the air with a velocity of 40 feet per second, its height in feet, t seconds later, is given by this function. 
So this is a distance function, just similar to what I we were looking at. 40t minus 16t squared. So y distance function y equals 40t minus 16t squared. Find the average velocity for the time period beginning with t equals 2 seconds and lasting 0.5 of a second, 0.1 of a second, 0.05 of a second, and the last one, 0.01 of a second. In part B, estimate. Estimate the instantaneous velocity when t equals 2. So looking at this, you may say, but this is very different from what we just looked at. Not at all. Not at all, If in case you're wondering. OK, 40t minus 16t squared is what type of function? Good. Uh, does it open up or does it open down? Does it have a minimum or does it have a maximum? And how do I know that? Yes, it has a maximum because uh, the leading coefficient. The leading coefficient is negative. So it has to have a maximum. And also, when I throw a ball, it's very clear that, okay. Right? So let's say this is the situation. And this is t equals 2. Where will be the, the largest interval? So I have to look at one, two, three, four intervals. The one lasting, what is the lar largest? Right, right. So bear with me, I'm going to say that this is 2, and I'm going to say that this is 2.5. I know that's not the case, but I want to have it as a wide interval. Okay, so the interval between 2 and 2.5, between 2 and 2.5, will give me this slope of the second line. The next in line, closer to 2, which one? So this one is done. Closer to 2, which one would be next? Right, so bear with me. Let's say that this is 2.1. So now, this will be, the slope of this line will give me the average velocity between second 2 and second 2.1. Okay, I'm done with this. Which one will be next in line? Very good. So then bear with me, let's say that this is, I, I know my, my scale is messed up, but that's not the point. That's not what, I, um, what is important, okay? So then this will be the slope of the line or the average velocity between 2 seconds and 2.05 seconds. Finally, the last one is, so I'm done with this as well. right in here somewhere, 2.01, and I will have this. See how it works? Which one would be the best estimate of the instantaneous velocity at 2? The slope of the ten of the slope of the second line between 2.01 and 2. So f of 2.01 minus f of 2 over 2.01 minus 2 will be the closest number to the slope of the ta tangent line at 2. Agreed? Okay, perfect. Let's determine them. So here's what I recommend. 
Can anyone give me the general slope that we just determined a few minutes ago? What was that? Let's call this S of T. S of T minus S of 2 oh, over uh, T minus 2. That's the general one. I don't need to in, in, implicate, if you want, or put in there H, because I already know that H will be a number. Right? So, what is S of T? 2.5, then it's so S of 2.5, then it will be S of S of 2, then it will be S of 2.05, and then it will be S of 2.01. This will not change because I have S of 2.5 minus S of 2 over 2.5 minus 2. The next one will be S of 2.1 minus S of 2 over 2.1 minus 2. So only this will change. First will be 2.5, then it will be 2.1, then it will be 2.05, and then it will be 2.01. Are we okay? Okay, here's what I do next. I put this function in. And y equals in parentheses. What is S of t? Can anyone dictate S of t? Yes, we don't have t, but we have x, the same thing. f of x minus minus 16x squared. X squared. Very good. Now, minus S of 2. Can anyone dictate S of 2? Let's determine it. So it's 40 times 2 and minus 16 times 4. 40 times 2 is 80. 16 times 4 is 64, so 80 minus 64 is 16, divided by, do we need to do S of 2 again? Are we in agreement? So 40 times 2 is 80, 16 times 4 is 64, 80 minus 64 is 16. Do we agree? Okay, yes. oh, divided by, in parentheses, always, x minus 2. And now let's go to second table. And what do I need to put in? What is the very first slope that I need to determine? What is t for the very first, the widest interval? What is t? 2.5. So 2.5. And it calculates what is the slope of the tangent line. That is the slope of the tangent line. Y1 is the slope. We just copied the, the slope into the calculator. S, S of t minus S of 2 over t minus 2. So what is negative 32? Slope of the tangent line, which means the fact that it's negative, in this case it's a velocity, it only means that it turn, comes back. That's all it means. It's, it says it gives a direction. Okay. Now, what else do I what do I have to put in next? Two point two point one. Okay. When I press enter, what will I get? What does this mean? It's negative twenty five point six. Okay. Very good. Uh, feet per second. What do I have to put next? 2.05. Okay, what do I get? Negative 24.8. And then what do I have to put in? 2.01. Can I put in 2? The denominator will be 0. Can I put in 2? Let's put in 2. We know we can't. 
I can put it to because the denominator is t minus two. What do I get? Yeah. Of course. But I want to, I consider 2.01 still far away. How much closer do you want to be to 2? 2.01 is still far. Let's say 2 point. Excellent. <laughs> Let's be even closer with 2 point. What do you think I'm going to get when I press enter? Of course. Oh, absolutely. What it, let's make it even closer. What do you think I'm going to get? So what is minus 24 feet per second then? The absolute for sure what? The instantaneous velocity at 2. There is no doubt. We are so close to 2, to that point, Q is almost overlapping P. It's so close, then that must be the instantaneous velocity at that point. Because there is no gap anymore. between. I'm, I'm creating two points. Point 2 comma S of 2 and point 2.0000000000001 comma F of that. They're so close, then that must be the instantaneous velocity or the slope of the tangent line at 2. Okay, so this is so close that it almost, the calculator identifies this with 2. That's the problem. That's why I got error. Because when I put in 2's point zero zero so many zeros, the calculator cannot handle that anymore. It thinks that I'm putting in 2, actually. Okay? So let's go back and put in these numbers. So I'm going to write uh, the average velocity between 2 and 2.5 is negative 32 feet per second. The average velocity between 2 and what was 2.1 is negative 25.6. Now you can punch in the calculator every one step by step, but it will take you 10 times longer than it took us once we created a function that gives us the slope at any point. Closer and closer to 2. So the average velocity between 2 and uh, 2.05 is negative 24.8 feet per second. And the last one, average velocity between 2 and 2.01 is negative 24.16 feet per second. And the part B was asking us to guess or estimate. So Part B, instantaneous, let me write it, at t equals 2 seconds is negative 24 feet per second. Obviously, my graph. If you remember, I said from the beginning, the graph just shows what I'm trying to do. Since all these numbers are negative and all my slopes are positive, of course, this is not a perfect indication of what's happening here. So everything was happening on this side, not on this side, right? So don't get confused. I was just explaining what was I was going to do. But it's all going to be on this side because all are negative. All slopes are negative, not positive. Okay? Any questions? Okay, I'd like to choose another problem. Uh, yes? switched over to the calculator. Was that recorded as well? No. No, because the camera only points here, does not point here. Uh, all I did was, 
I put in this function in the calculator. So I put the function in y equals, I put in, uh, in parentheses, 40x minus 16x squared minus 16, because s of 2 equals 16 feet, 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 okay, uh, divided by x minus 2. No, that part was not recorded. Is that minus six? that was 16? Yes, 16. Remember 16 was S, of, so it's right here. S of 2 is 16. Okay. So this is this. This is this. This is this. Is that okay? Good. So let's, uh, let's work on another problem. Let's look at problem 8. The displacement in centimeters of a particle moving back and forth along a straight line is given by the equation. So we have this time S of t, which is 2 sine pi t plus 3 cosine pi t, where t is measured in seconds. Find the average velocity during each time period. First one, 1, 2. Second one. 1 comma 1.1. Third, 1, 1.01. And fourth, uh, 1, 1 1.01. And fifth, whatever you want. To come up with the best estimate. And then we want part B, so this was part A. Instantaneous velocity at t equals 1. Ready? Good. So what are you going to do? You could initially create a function. It doesn't have to look like this. It doesn't have to be a sine cosine. Just create a function. Just draw a little graph if you want. And what will you put on that graph? How many points? So you'll put 1 and 2. Then you will put 1 and 1.1, then you will put 1 and 1.01, and then you'll put 1 and 1.001, and in your calculator you will put, do whatever you want. And then at the end of the day you will come up with instantaneous velocity, which will be a very, very good estimate. Okay? Five minutes. I recommend create the function because it will take you much less time. You can do it separate. You can do s of 2 minus s of 1 over 2 minus 1. Then you can do s of 1.1 minus s of 1 over 1.1 minus 1. You can do those four. I recommend create the function that will help you in the calculator. Which function will you create? When you have the function, I'll write it down.
Can anyone create the function that is the slope that will give us all of them once I put that in the calculator? Or the y function that you want to create? For a function that will give us all the answers at once and not have to do s of 2 minus s of 1 over 2 minus 1, s of this minus this over. Okay, um, so the uh, function should be uh, uh, 2 pi cosine. Yes, so it will be s of t oh, minus. Sorry. Sorry. Yes, no, I would like to show it and then we'll fill it out, fill it in. Replace s of t minus. Exactly, which will never change because I will always have s of 2 minus s of 1, s of 2 minus s of 1 over 2 minus 1. When, when t is 1.1, s of 1.1 minus s of 1 over 1.1 minus 1. When this is 1.01, s of 1.01 minus s of 1 over 1.01 minus 1. And the last one, 1.001 minus s of 1 over 1.001 minus 1, right? Or you can do it separately. Is this okay? Is it clear what we are trying to do, or not? Or it's okay if you say it's not clear. Okay. So do you remember? Oh, it doesn't matter. This is a function. Don't even look at it. This is a function. It's the same procedure for any function. You just have to put in the calculator. Yeah. So anytime that you see a that you see a function, just think of like taking f of um, f of x instead of like just sign because it kind of We're not gonna graph that, we're gonna put in the calculator. <coughs> well, I'm trying to figure out how to convert that into the S of T portion. You just copy it in here. We didn't do anything to this. We just copied it in here. So the t is so, replaced by the like two sine pi x plus three cosine pi x. You mean s of one? Are you talking about s of one? No, the s of t. S of t. Yeah. So this was s of t before, forty t right. minus sixteen t squared, and that's what we did. Forty right. x minus sixteen x squared. Then we had s of two. <coughs> we plugged in two and we got sixteen. And then we had <coughs> x minus two. Right. So in the same way, we this time we have one, not two, right. and we have a different function. Okay. But it's the same right, so procedure. Yeah, the, the, the sine cosine portion is what's going to take the place of S exactly. Okay. It's S of t. Okay. That's our S of t now. In okay. previously it was forty x minus sixteen x squared. Now it's this. So this will be two sine pi t plus three cosine pi t, in a moment we will determine s of 1, and t minus 1 the denominator. Of course in the calculator I have to use x instead of t. Right. So I have to determine s of 1. So when t is 1, how much is sine pi? Um, yes. So sine pi is 0, 0 times 2 is 0. How much is cosine pi? One. A negative, it's on the other side. So 1 is positive here, negative. So this is negative 1 times 3. Negative 3. So now this is s of t minus s of 1 <coughs> over t minus 1. So let's put in the calculator. You have to make sure that all calculations, almost all calculations in calculus, are in radians. So let's go to mode and make sure that you have highlighted radians, not degrees. And now let's go back of, out of there with second and quit. And then go to uh, y equals. Clear what you had before. <coughs> Parentheses for the top. Can anyone dictate?
You cannot dictate from your cell phones, though. You have to dictate from your piece of paper, because I see the cell phones. So two times? Two, two sine pi. OK, so sine in parentheses. Here's pi right here, right here. Pi x, close the parentheses, plus three cosine, three cosine parentheses, pi x, close the parentheses, and then plus three. plus three, close the parentheses for the top, the top is all done, now divided by, in parentheses again, x, minus 1 and close the parenthesis. So I have a function that will give us the slope between what? Between 1 and 2. Here's 1, here's 2. Between 1 and 2. Now it's going to give us the slope between 1 and 1.1 when we plug in 1.1 in it. Then between 1 and 1.01 when I plug in 1.01 in it. And finally, will give us the slope between 1 and 1.001 when I plug in 1.001 in it. And if I want to be closer, I can to find the instantaneous velocity at 1. OK, so we go to second and table. Question, can I plug in 1? I want to plug in 1. No, because the denominator will be 0. Correct. And and the numerator as well. But so now we want to plug in what what is the first value that I plug in? Two. Two and enter. So what is six? Six is the the average velocity during that time between one and two. That's the average velocity. What do I plug in next? Very good. One point one and enter. What do I plug in next? 1.01. Next. 1.001. And next. I want to be even closer. I don't believe this. This is still far away. 1.000001. And enter. I still consider far away. I should. It's clear. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. And you will repeat indefinitely. So therefore, what is the instantaneous velocity at t equals one? For sure. Because now q, I brought q so close to one, they're almost the same point. So this will be the slope of the tangent line. So roughly, so the slope at 1, for sure, negative 6.283 feet per second. And yes, you, Chris, you had a question? Oh, um. So the velocity here, before I forget, is 6 feet per second. The velocity here is negative 4.712 feet per second. The velocity here is negative 6.134 feet per second. And the last one, negative 6.268 feet per second. And you can write as many as you want, as close as, yes. Forgive me, you wanted to say something? Chris, you wanted to say something? Oh, no. Oh, okay, I thought, I thought you might say something. So, is the mechanism clear? Do you understand why I prefer, but you don't have to, why I prefer to create this function and put it in <coughs> so that I don't have to do it by hand for each and every point between 2 and 1. f of 2 minus f of 1 over 2 minus 1. But that's what it is, right? Between 1.01 1 .01, f of 1.01 .01 minus f of 1 over 1.01 .01 minus 1. Instead, I create a function, and I only put this variable that changes. 1 does not change, because it's the reference point. But this is 2 first, then 1.01, .01, and then 1.001, .01, and then 1.001. .01. So this is the variable.
and I create a function that gives a slope of the average or of the secant line and gives us the average velocity instead of doing it by hand, which is fine. You can. But creating the function will take you five minutes. Doing it by hand will take you 15. Any questions? Well, this is the end of section <coughs> 2.1. However, I did not get the chance to talk about how to study the sign of an expression, which is a major topic in this course. So uh, I do have uh, four minutes. No, I don't have four minutes. I have one minute, so I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I thought I had four minutes. So um, what I would like to I can stop this now. Uh,